hands, everybody. Uh, clap your hands. Come on, keep it going. Clap your hands, everybody. Clap your hands, everybody. Uh, clap. So my story starts with a simple decision I made when I graduated MIT. See, when most people, when they graduate from college, are figuring out what jobs they're going to, um, where they're going to live. My decision, my options, came down to accepting a million dollars. So you're probably wondering, okay, well, how exactly did you have the option to accept a million dollars? Well, I got to give you some more context on myself and Conduit. So hi, I'm Ryan, and my company's name is Conduit, C-O-N-D-U-I-T. And long story short, we make magic real. And not only do we make magic real, we make it where it helps people. We make magic that heals the world. And so coming out of MIT, just in the first 12 months, Conduit was already a household name. We were featured in Forbes and MIT News, and people knew us all across the world, and it was amazing. And in the process, we were offered a million dollars. So what did I say? So a million dollars coming out of MIT, spending years getting my education, creating new technologies that would change the world. I said, no. Yep, I already making that face too. So to my family and probably the government. So the reason why I said no is because creating magic requires something that's very important. It's called freedom. You can't create magic without it. And so in the short 12 months after I graduated from MIT, I was blessed to have many different opportunities to be featured across the world and create a great team and bring on uh, investors and advisors that supported me. But when it came to that particular check, there was a cost that comes with it. The cost of this check was our freedom. It was the cost of doing what we wanted to do. And I don't just mean myself, I mean my whole team, scientists, biologists, engineers, mathematicians, creatives, artists, musicians that had come together to create a quantum future. And we had a clear vision of how and what we wanted to do. And so while we were excited to see a million dollar check, to see the, the paperwork, at the same time, we knew that if we took this money, we would lose something that was really important, and that was freedom. See, because few people believe in magic, but more people believe in shortcuts. And see, the thing is, while shortcuts and magic may seem similar, they're dramatically different. See, when it comes to making magic, making things that are truly unique, truly innovative, cutting edge, futuristic, there are no shortcuts. And so we knew that taking the shortcut path would actually cost us more in the long term than that million dollars was ever worth to us. We knew that there's money and there's value. And we knew that as long as we pursued value, the success would come. Now, that sounds really fancy to say now, but at the time, it was still pretty heartbreaking and embarrassing and humiliating. Uh, context, when you graduate from a school like MIT, a lot of your friends go to really fancy uh, jobs where they're getting paid lots and lots of money to do really important things. And so while my friends were making lots of money, what I did is I ended up packing my bags, giving up my apartment, uh, losing my girlfriend, and going back home to my grandma's. And my team of over about 100 people went down to two. So the whole company was about three people, um, which is very humbling. I'll say that it's very humbling. So I went from having an office on the water um, to uh, having security whenever I walked, people taking my picture when I went outside 
to sleeping on my grandma's couch. So not the funnest, even though I love my grandma, love you, me. Is with going back home, something special happened. Although I didn't have the material possessions and the worldly definition of success, the articles and the entourage um, and the attention, what I did have was my family, my friends that knew me even when I was a little kid, watched me grow up. I had the hometown that I grew up in. But not only that, I had my freedom. And so I used that freedom to create the magic that I always wanted to, to make kind of the company I always wanted it to be, to create magic that helps people. And after studying and studying, working and working, balancing idea after idea, we realized that quantum engineering could be applied to medication. We could use the principles of quantum physics to create new medications the world had never seen quicker than we ever imagined. Now, when we created this technology, a funny thing happened. Well, two things happened. Two things that we didn't expect at all. One is that we were featured in Forbes again. So that was pretty cool. But this time, when, when it happened, when we were featured, it, it meant a lot more. Because with that article, we accomplished what we wanted on our terms. I got to make the future with my friends and family, with people that would be with me through thick and thin. And again, no money can replace that. And so... When that article came out, it was a victory for everyone. And it was a victory for the right things. The second thing that happened wasn't that great. So normally, when you're creating a new medication, it takes many years. It takes a team of sometimes thousands of people, different organizations coordinating together. But in 2020, something happened. Something that we all know happened, and something that will definitely be in the history books for people watching this in the future. So when 2020 started, to give you guys an idea, watching this in the future, everyone was excited. Everyone saw this as a new beginning. We had new goals, new resolutions. We were excited. It was the first time that I had seen in my life that the whole world was ready to start a new page, open a new chapter. It was awesome. But life is what happens when you make plans. And so fast forward a few months into 2020, something impeccably small, so small you couldn't even see it, was causing distress across the world. It was causing people to get sick from all over, from Africa to North America to Latin America, to India, to Japan. Every country practically was affected. It was a virus. It was what we call SARS-CoV-2, creating a disease that's called COVID-19. At the time, it was surreal. It was the first time in modern history they would ever been in what's called a pandemic. And so in the process, the world needed solutions. We needed to find out ways to figure out new approaches to creating medications quickly, quickly. The 10 year timeline before didn't work, it couldn't work. And so governments across the world created new initiatives to create these treatments, to create a solution for COVID-19 and future variants. Specifically here in America, the White House created something called the HPC Consortium. HPC Consortium, which stands for High 
Performance Computing Consortium, which is just a fancy word to say it's like the uh, Avengers of computer scientists and biologists across the world, figuring out new ways to solve a new problem, which was COVID-19. It featured some of the top companies in the world, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and many other companies, including Conduit. So in just a few, a few short years, Conduit became a company working alongside the White House and some of the biggest companies in the world to find a treatment for COVID-19. We brought an amazing biologist, super genius biologist the world had never seen before, like Logan Thrasher Collins. Hey, Logan. And so Logan, alongside the rest of the simulations team, created a whole new approach to look at COVID diseases, to study coronaviruses, and see how can we create new treatments, not just for now in 2020, but for 2030, 2040, and beyond, for the future of mankind regardless of race, skin, sexuality, anything. Something that would help everybody. And so you're probably wondering, what does a cat have to do with any of this? Uh, I know I would. So remember, we're here at MIT, and when I was here, I studied quantum physics. In that process, you learn a few things. You learn a few things about physics, but you also learn a few things about life. Starting with the physics part, I learned about a cat, a cat named Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger, for those who don't know, was a famous quantum physicist named Erwin Schrodinger. And the thing about quantum physicists is that they're a little strange, a little out of the box, a little eccentric. And so any pet that they own is gonna be a little different too. So Schrodinger was bent on understanding the universe and how it worked. Specifically, he wanted to understand how superposition worked. So superposition is a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics. That's why quantum is so weird. Superposition is the principle in quantum mechanics where something can be uh, two opposing things at the same time. Up, down, left, right. Okay, Ryan, well, what does that look like? I don't understand. How can something be both left and right at the same time? It's like clapping with one hand. Well, that's the thing. No one's ever really seen it. And that's why Schrodinger was so obsessed with it. And his cat, Schrodinger's cat. So Schrodinger and his cat devised an experiment to determine how something could be not only left and right at the same time, not only up and down at the same time, but alive and dead at the same time. It was revolutionary. No one really understood how quantum physics worked at that time. And in the process, we learned a bit about quantum physics. I learned a bit about quantum physics, but I also learned a bit about life. I learned from Schrodinger's cat, which by the way was so eccentric, so different from a regular cat that it actually didn't even exist. It was a cat that lived only in his mind. What I learned from this cat is that the same way the universe can be so strange, we can be both left and right at the same time, up and down at the same time, alive and dead at the same time, at least arguably, is that a success can also be a failure at the same time, especially when you define success by other people's standards. I also learned from Schrodinger's cat is that in fact your failures, your biggest failures, can lead to your biggest successes. The trick in all of it, the magic behind all of it, is that regardless of the situation, whether failure or success, is you have to remember who you are. You have to remember what excited you in the first place. You have to remember the child and not become too much of an adult in the process. You have to stay true to who you are. And so what I did, and what I learned from Schrodinger's cat, is that success isn't always success, and that failure isn't always failure. 
And in fact, if in your worst moments, your most embarrassing moments, your most humiliating moments, the moments where you feel like all your friends are doing better than you, is if you stay true to what inspires you and what keeps you true to your heart, that your biggest failures will actually be the stairway to your greatest successes. You got this, guys. I believe in you.